Mafia 3 takes place in the same universe as, as Mafia 1 and 2. So we referenced, you know, uh, Empire Bay and, and characters from the franchise that were in the previous games. And that connective tissue is Vito Scaletta. After the events of Mafia 2, Leo saves his life, but the price for that is that Vito's exiled. He's sent to New Bordeaux, but he can never return to Empire Bay. He's basically out of everything that he'd been working toward in that city. And once he's in New Bordeaux, he falls under, obviously, Sal Marcano and reports up to him. But Vito has very much an extra grind with Marcano because he was betrayed very much the same way that Lincoln was. Now, because Vito is a made man, Marcano can't just go after him. He's still under the protection of Leo Galante, who still exists in Empire Bay. So Marcano has to be a little bit sneakier. He has to be a little bit more political about slowly edging out Vito. And this is one of the reasons why Vito is ultimately turning to Lincoln and asking for his help. Not only do we address what has happened to Vito in the time between Mafia 2 and 3, and, and we explore in some ways Vito's relationship and feelings about Leo and his feelings about Sal and all the things that have happened, but we also do make sure that we address uh, some of the other big you know, loose ends from Mafia 2, and namely Joe's fate. That was really important to us that if we're gonna have Vito in the game, we have to be able to talk about that and reveal that. And I think if you're a player who's interested in Vito and interested in that, and you devote some time to Vito and you, you do some of his, uh, what we call agenda missions in the game and build some loyalty with Vito, you'll be rewarded as you go through the game and, and learn more about what happened to Joe and, and uh, kind of his fate.